All right, welcome back to our unit on nuclear chemistry. Today's topic is radiation and radioactive decay. Lesson two of three, your objectives are as follows. Okay, you will learn the terms wavelength and frequency and be able to apply these terms to electromagnetic radiation. Okay, you will learn about the different types of radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum. You will learn what radioactive decay is in the three most basic types. You will learn how to write nuclear equations that involve alpha and beta decay. Okay, feel free to pause this video anytime you feel necessary. For your quick write, what do you think of when you hear the words radiation or radioactive? What do you think are some consequences of being exposed to high levels of radiation? What are some forms of radiation you're familiar with or may have heard of? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, so radiation. Radiation is an energy in the form of waves or particles that can travel through space. Okay, radiation can be electromagnetic waves, such as lethal gamma rays seen below. Okay, well, how lethal radiation, electromagnetic radiation is, depends on the wavelength and frequency. Okay, radiation can also be particles, such as the alpha particles seen below. Okay. Many types of radiation exist. They range from harmless to more dangerous forms. So for your notes, what is radiation? Question on the left-hand side. Answer here goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you work on this. I'm going to move on. All right, electromagnetic radiation, wavelength, and frequency. Wavelength is the distance from one peak to the next. Okay, so you can see from peak to peak, that is the wavelength distance. Frequency is the number of wave peaks that pass a given point in a certain amount of time. All right, so let's say this is the point we're interested in right here. Okay, notice more peaks are passing by for our short wavelength radiation here. Okay, but down here we have longer wavelength radiation. Less peaks are passing by our point. Okay. So the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Radiation can be harmless or dangerous depending upon the wavelength and frequency. Okay, so for this person right here, he's being exposed to more peaks. More peaks means a shorter wavelength, higher frequency equals greater energy, and therefore it is more dangerous, increased health risk. Okay, well down here, the long wavelength radiation, okay, has lower frequency, less peaks are passing by, so which means he's being exposed to less energy so a decreased health risk, okay? So for your notes, what is the difference between wavelength and frequency? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum. Many different types of radiation exist, from harmless radio waves to lethal gamma waves. Okay, scientists call this range of radiation the electromagnetic spectrum, or EM spectrum. Radio waves have the longest wavelength and are therefore harmless forms of radiation. Okay, this is why our cell phones and radios operate on these frequencies. Microwaves have a shorter wavelength and are also considered harmless forms of radiation. Okay, and as you might have guessed, these microwaves use a, your microwaves use a specific frequency to cook our food. Moving down the spectrum, infrared rays or heat waves have an even shorter wavelength. Okay, the heat you feel from a fire is a result of your body absorbing infrared heat waves. Okay, with an even shorter wavelength is visible light. Okay, this is the type of radiation we can see. Visible light frequencies are only forms of radiation we can observe, allowing us to see everything around us. Okay, as wavelength decreases, frequency increases, and radiation starts to become dangerous. Okay, look down here how the waves change, going to ultraviolet here. Okay, too much exposure to ultraviolet rays from the sun can cause skin cancer. Okay, even more lethal than ultraviolet rays are x-rays, which have an even shorter wavelength. If you've ever received an x-ray at the doctor's office, you may have noticed a lead vest was put over you to shield you from being overexposed to the x-ray radiation. Okay? 
And finally, the most harmful form of radiation are gamma rays. Okay, Gamma radiation is given off from unstable atoms as well as exploding stars throughout our universe. So for your notes, what is electromagnetic okay, spectrum or the EM spectrum? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side of your notes. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is the spontaneous transformation of an unstable atomic nucleus into a more stable one, in which radiation is released in the form of beta, alpha, and gamma radiation. Okay, so the, consider the alpha decay of the unstable nucleus below. Okay, the unstable nucleus will eventually emit an alpha particle made up of two protons and two neutrons. This is, in effect, essentially a helium nucleus with a mass of 4 AMU. The second type of radioactive decay occurs below when the nucleus with an unstable neutron undergoes beta decay. So in beta decay here, a beta particle is emitted. Okay? The atom has an unstable neutron that will eventually emit a beta particle. Okay, this is basically an electron with a minus one charge. And in the process, the neutron transforms itself into a proton. Okay, so the neutron here is now a proton. So the final type of radioactive decay, gamma decay, occurs when an unstable nucleus, such as the one seen below, emits gamma radiation. And in the process, the atom goes from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. If you recall, gamma rays can be lethal, and unlike beta or alpha particles, they have no mass or charge, and are therefore usually not written in nuclear equations. Okay, gamma radiation is often emitted during alpha or beta decay. Okay, so for your notes, what is radioactive decay? Question on the left-hand side, answer here goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, alpha particles and alpha decay. Alpha decay is a type of radioactive decay in which an atomic nucleus emits an alpha particle and thereby transforms or decays into an atom with a mass number that is four less and an atomic number that is two less. Okay, an alpha particle is made up of two protons and two neutrons, which is the same as a helium nucleus, which has a mass of four AMU, two protons plus two neutrons. Okay, alpha decay usually happens in larger heavier atoms okay since alpha particles have two protons and no electrons they have a net charge of plus two so during alpha decay an atom's proton count decreases by two and as a result a new element is created it is also important to note that the overall mass of the atom decreases by four so the mass number goes down by four okay so Let's consider the alpha decay here of uranium-238, way down here at the bottom of our periodic table. Okay, uranium-238 okay, emits an alpha particle. Okay. The unstable nucleus emits an alpha particle and in the process becomes a new element, thorium-234. Okay, so it's a new element. It's went from uranium here to thorium. Okay, so notice the mass number decreased by 4, 238 to 234, and it lost two protons. So the atomic number went from 92 to 90, okay, which is the atomic number for the new element, thorium, all right? We can represent this change by the nuclear equation seen below, where uranium-238 here decays into thorium-234, and an alpha particle is released, okay? Let's look at one more example. Radon here, okay? Radium 226. Okay, so radium 226, once again, is down here near the bottom of our periodic table. Okay, it emits an alpha particle, two neutrons, two protons. All right. Let me go back. Okay, the unstable nucleus emits an alpha particle and in the process becomes a new element. Radon 222 here, okay? So, notice the mass number once again decreased by 4, 226 to 222, and the atomic number, okay, went from 88, which is now 86, OK? 
okay, which is the atomic number for radon. So we can represent this change by the nuclear equation seen below, where radium-226 here decays into radon-222, and an alpha particle is released. Okay. Alpha particles, okay, or radiation, is the least penetrating form of radiation. Okay. Because of these particles are relatively massive, they can be blocked by a piece of paper. Okay. So for your notes, what is alpha decay? Question on the left-hand side. Okay, answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so practice for your notes. Complete the alpha decay equations below. Try to determine what goes in these boxes here. Go ahead and pause this while you work on these. When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. All right, so thorium-230 decays into radium-226 okay, and a helium nucleus or alpha particle okay, is released. Okay, polonium-208 decays into lead-204 and once again, okay, an alpha particle is released. Okay, and this time you have to work backwards. So we're moving away from iridium here. Okay, and the answer is gold, 185. All right, so hopefully you did pretty good on those. All right, so beta particles and beta decay. Beta decay is the type of radioactive decay in which an unstable atom releases a beta particle, which is an electron from the nucleus, increasing or sometimes decreasing the atomic number by one. So a beta particle is an electron represented by this Greek symbol or E with zero and a negative one, okay? Beta decay increases the proton count by one, and once again, it results in the formation of a new element. It is important to understand that the released electron or beta particle is not from the electrons surrounding the nucleus, but from the nucleus itself. Because beta particle is an electron, they have virtually no mass. They don't weigh pretty much nothing when compared to a proton or a neutron, but they do have a charge of minus one. Because beta particles have less mass and move faster than alpha particles, they also have more energy and are more penetrating. Okay, so let's look at our example here. Here's carbon-14, an isotope of carbon right here. Okay, so consider the beta decay of carbon-14 into stable nitrogen-14. Okay, the process begins when an unstable neutron in the nucleus emits a beta particle, an electron. Okay, beta particle is emitted. After the beta particle is emitted, the neutron has changed into a proton. Okay, so the addition of a proton results in the formation of a new element. Okay, notice carbon has now become nitrogen. So notice the mass number did not change. 14 is still 14. Okay, but because the unstable neutron turned into a proton, the atomic number increased from 6 to seven, increased by one. And in the process, a new element, nitrogen, was created. Okay, and an electron here, a beta particle, was given off. Okay, we can represent this change by the nuclear equation seen below, where unstable carbon-14, okay, decays into stable nitrogen-14, and a beta particle over here is released. Okay, let's look at one more example here, sodium, okay? Consider the beta decay of unstable sodium-24 into stable magnesium-24. Okay, the process begins when an unstable neutron in the nucleus emits a beta particle. Okay, a beta particle is given off. After the beta particle is emitted, the neutron has changed into a proton. Okay, which remember, that is means it turned into a new element. Okay. So sodium has now become magnesium 24. So notice the mass number once again did not change 24 to 24. But because the unstable neutron turned into a proton, the atomic number increased by one from 11 to 12. Okay, and a new element magnesium 24 was created. Okay, we can represent this change once again by the nuclear equation seen below, 
where unstable sodium-24 decays into stable magnesium-24 and a beta particle electron here is released. Okay, so beta particles are smaller than alpha particles and are therefore more penetrating forms of radiation. Okay, they can go through paper, okay, but they are stopped by aluminum or even clothing. Okay, so what is beta decay? Question on the left hand side, answer goes on the right hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, practice for your notes. Complete the beta decay equations below. Okay, go ahead and work on these. Hit pause. When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. Okay, xenon gas will decay into iodine-131, okay, and we get an electron, okay, a beta particle. Aluminum, okay, will become silicon-28, and once again, a beta particle is released. Okay, we got to work backwards this time. Argon, okay. Okay, if chlorine 39 decays, it'll become argon. And once again, a beta particle is released. Okay, hope you did pretty good on those. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is gamma radiation and gamma decay. Okay, symbolized by the Greek letter mu. okay, gamma decay occurs when a nucleus of an unstable atom loses energy by emitting a gamma ray. Okay, without changing its atomic mass or mass numbers. Okay, so there's no change in mass because gamma rays have no mass. All right, so gamma rays or radiation is pure energy and have no mass or charge. Okay, gamma decay takes place during alpha or beta decay as dangerous gamma rays are released. It is important to realize that gamma decay does not affect the mass or atomic number of an isotope. So it is not always written in a nuclear equation. Okay, so... Gamma radiation is the most penetrating of all radiation, okay? It is highly penetrating. So because of its short wavelength and high frequency, gamma radiation can penetrate human tissue where it can damage cells and even cause cancer. So it easily goes through paper and aluminum here, okay? Gamma radiation can be stopped by a lead or concrete wall though, okay? So what is gamma decay? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this. Okay, I'm, while you write, I'm going to move on. Okay, so go ahead and summarize. All right? You can always write your own, just a reminder there. Okay, so in terms of electromagnetic radiation, compare and contrast the terms frequency and wavelength. On the EM spectrum, what are some dangerous forms of radiation? What are some harmless forms of radiation? Explain radioactive decay in your own words. And what is the difference between an alpha particle and beta particle? And finally, briefly summarize the three types of radioactive decay. All right, we'll see you next time.